Welcome, welcome to the Miracle Work. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Thank you so much for being here. That's great. So we continue with, um, say, the light lessons. And um, this is great. So after, after we've all been through, so to speak, this is a great one to start with. And it's lesson 93 of the word textbook uh, of A Course in Miracles. And I actually need your active participation. Um, so that's what I want to request right away. Um, so to get some ideas on the whiteboard. Um, so I'll pull up the whiteboard and a new whiteboard. I want to invite you to um, write down one description of yourself this morning or this evening or today um, that came up that is not really like you as a son of God. So what I mean to say is like give one definition of yourself, write down one word, um, that illustrates um, an idea you had about yourself that has nothing to do with the true you. So go ahead and, and do it. It will be not personal. So it's like you will not be visible directly. So don't write your name or anything. It's just about the word. So. There you go. All right. So it was a little warming up. Like it doesn't matter what you have written down. It is a description of yourself that isn't you. And but um, we use it in today's lesson, and you will you will discover why. So the one part that I'm going to do is um, it's like I'm going to share the screen with you with a PDF of the or text, and start reading the first paragraph of lesson ninety three. I will, you will be amazed how well that works. Um, all right, so here's the, the word text. Okay, so these things down. Lesson 93, so here we start. There's a great lesson. So it's one of the three light lessons in the beginning of the 90s. So it's it's an advanced light lesson, uh, as I call it. The light and joy and peace abide in me. You think, you, we are, like you think you are the home of evil, darkness and sin. You think if anyone could see the truth about you, he would be repelled, recoiling from you as it uh, oh, here's one more. Um, you think if anyone could see the truth about you, he would be repelled, recoiling from you as if from a poisonous snake. You think if th what is true about you were revealed to you, you would be struck with horror so intense that you would rush to death by uh, your own hand, living on after seeing this being impossible well so we were pretty superficial still in our expressions but looking within looking at your inner idea about yourself at times suddenly you think this it could be like this you think you're the home of evil darkness and sin like if anyone could see the truth about you, he would just run away. That could that could be your idea about yourself. Um, and you think if what is true about you were revealed to you, you would be struck with horror so intense that you would rush to death by your own hand, living on after seeing this being impossible. 
like, well, okay, that is pretty intense, but it's clear, right? So you can have ideas about yourself that aren't very loving and however that is looking, but it's like preventing you from actually deeply looking inside, thinking that what you will see will not be that pretty and not that, uh, say, yeah, ego inflating, but more like ego deflating. You think that there's something that can be your idea about yourself, thinking that there's something going on in you that's not so pretty, that is totally distorted, and um, and all this. You know, we we can have ideas about ourselves like that. So whether that is what you just wrote down, it's like too busy, too much to do. Mm trapped i feel so trapped if anyone could see how much i'm in a prison oh my god i'm so ashamed of myself or whatever it is or i'm a liar i'm i'm just a liar well if anyone could see that then i would never be able to face myself again so you can have all kinds of ideas is just what i'm saying so we continue second paragraph these are beliefs so firmly fixed that it is difficult to help you see that they are based on nothing. That you have made mistakes is obvious, and that you have sought salvation in strange ways, have been deceived and deceiving and afraid of foolish fantasies and savage dreams, and have bowed down to idols made of dust. All this is true by what you now believe. So today we question this, not from the point of view of what you think, but from a very different reference point from which its idle thoughts are meaningless. These thoughts are not accorded to God's will. These weird beliefs he does not share with you. This is enough to prove that they are wrong, but you do not perceive that this is so. Why would you not be overjoyed to be assured that all the evil which you think you did was never done, and all your sins are nothing, and that you are as pure and holy as you were created, and that light and joy and peace abide in you? Your image of yourself cannot withstand the will of God. You think that this is death, but it is life. You think that you are destroyed, but you are saved. So the great thing in them is that we uh, can change our mind about ourselves. You know, that's, that's so amazing. What an option. <laughs> How helpful. How helpful. I can't believe it. Uh, it's so great to have that. Luckily, all of that is not true. And I I remember from myself too, like in moments of intensities that I went through. Unbelievable. I'm I'm just fooling around to you with these things. Okay. Um, so I can remember too, like uh, a moment ago, I was thinking things about myself that were not true and got so, I was so identified with it, like a so thought it was part of me that you think like, well, is that ever going to be, yeah, is that ever going to change? Is there a hope for a new born me in this whole story? Like, I know it, it can be done. I know by practicing that something will change and I, recognizing that I'm the source of things and all that will help me to come to that point. But when is that going to happen? Because I still hold ideas about myself that are not true at all. But um, so here we are, we practice this today. It's light and peace and joy abide in me. That is the actual status, you know, that's my actual beingness. And, and nothing can disturb that, like nothing can oppose that will. I was created by the will of God and, and nothing can oppose that. 
So how many times do I need to hear that in order for me to accept it? That's that's a bit of the question. Like, how long is that going to take? And so today we want to really like put some speed <laughs> speed that up a little bit. Um, see the 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 most important thing is um, uh, realizing that what happened before is gone is over it cannot have an effect so what is your judgment about yourself what are these crazy ideas you hold about yourself based on 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 your past on your past ideas because you did such foolish things and here it says yes indeed of course you made mistakes like you made mistakes but mistakes are correctable it's not it's not a fact in terms of you can't get rid of it or you cannot uh, be dislodged from it no not at all mm -hmm. so that's really like the good news today to see that that's a possibility and when i say it like this it sounds a bit superficial but we will dive deeper into it so it's like the the possibility um to to have it different than you think like the descriptions that you hold about yourself to to come up with a different one to to see that you don't need to define yourself at all is is something that we come closer to all the time it's like what is is that is just a given that's a fact like god is a fact you are part of that you are that you're a whole part of that see and and the the great thing is that uh, when we share these ideas about ourselves even though they are crazy for a moment you in the love that we share that's it's okay to have that like nobody's going to attack you for it nobody's going to do anything for it in this light of recognition like we recognize the love for one another we we recognize that that is what what binds us or what what actually is the uh, the stuff that we're made of so in that all things can happen it's like yeah that's not an ideal situation no that's not such a good idea or yes i you you got completely taken away by your thoughts about yourself but see what i mean is that yeah there's space for mistakes it's okay you don't have to behave perfectly in this setup you don't have to behave perfectly no it's okay to make a mistake here here we are recognizing the love for each other seeing it dissolve just like that it's like nobody's gonna hold that against you so you don't have to hold it against yourself either you know this is love can carry this so to speak love can convert this love can let this yeah can shine this away the light and love and joy can shine this away we can laugh about the crazy ideas we hold about ourselves you know so recognizing that recognize yeah it's, it's like this is embedded in the love we we feel for each other this is embedded in that like it is very it it, it is able to convert all of these crazy ideas that's why we come together that's why you need like an oasis of light where you can have this experience whether whether that is online or whether that's life it, it works either way it's like whether you sit with yourself in recognition of the love for your brother uh, and god you know it works just as well what i mean to say is like when you sit and meditate in your closet it works just as well but it can be a lot of fun just like we did now it's like oh these ideas look at that we write them down it's like this is consuming my mind right now this is so taking over and i i let go of it i share it to to let go of it to to yeah have this idea being converted for me so that's a healing experience in fact that's a healing possibility of course so so this is um yeah i come back to the words it's like this is what love can do this is what the recognition of the love for each other can do and that is so yeah beautiful in that sense and it's so helpful 
All right, so we continue with uh, with the next paragraph because there's there's more, and it's great. Um, so L4, would you not be overjoyed to be assured that all the evil which you think you did was never done and that all your sins are nothing? That you are as pure and as holy as you were created and that light and joy and peace abide in you? Your image of yourself cannot withstand the will of God. You think that this is death, but it is life. You think you are destroyed, but you are saved. The self you made is not the Son of God. Therefore, this, this self does not exist at all. Anything it seems to do and think means nothing. Hmm. It is neither good nor bad, nor bad nor good. It is unreal and nothing more than that. It does not battle with the Son of God. It does not hurt him or nor attack his peace. It cannot change creation nor reduce nor reduced eternal sinlessness to sin and love to hate. What power can this self you made possess? when it would contradict the will of God? So there are some questions here. Would you not be overjoyed to hear this? Like realize in this moment, realize that none of this had any effect. All the things that you think was um, say, yeah, giving a description of you that is so limited and so painful in fact. Are you not overjoyed to hear that it is absolutely like nothing? It is completely undone for you already. And you are as pure and as holy as you were created. Are you not happy to hear that? Listen, listen to this. It's amazing. It's amazing, this gift. None of these descriptions of yourself can I say contradict the will of God. It's not doesn't have any power. Like we noticed from Joel too, it's like it's, it's no power, absolutely no power. It has no like God's will does not have an opposition. So here's another question: What power can this self you made possess when it would contradict the will of God? What could it possibly do? Creating something that isn't real? Well, in your dreams. <laughs> okay, so we continue with L6. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Over and over, this must be repeated until it is accepted. It is true. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. So maybe you're go going to help me to write this down on a new on a new whiteboard. Let's do a brand new whiteboard. Um, so we're going to do some homework. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. So so go ahead and and write this down in a way that you would love to present this. All right, great, awesome. Yeah, why not a bit of drawing is great too. Uh 
Okay, so we continue with the next paragraph. Let's see what that uh, gives brings to us. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Over and over, this must be repeated until it is accepted. It is true. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Nothing can touch it, nor change it, what God created as eternal. The self you made, evil and full of sin, is meaningless. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God, and light and joy and peace abide in you. Salvation requires the acceptance of but one thought, and it is this. You are as God created you, not what you made of yourself. Whatever evil you may think you did, you are as God created you. Whatever mistakes you made, the truth about you is unchanged. Creation is eternal and unalterable. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. You are and will forever be exactly as you were created. Light and peace and joy abide in you because God put them there. So before we start practicing this directly, like as it is in this lesson, and, and this is a bit like a daily uh, lesson. So in this day, you're going to repeat it every hour for five minutes or so. So you might want to do that uh, because it, it is actually helpful to be reminded of this like over and over and over. But maybe you already do the lessons and then you just follow your own lesson. I bring, say, this lesson to you. I share this lesson with you just because it's so um, helpful to, uh, say, literally, uh, say, help you to to land in yourself in a new idea about yourself you know literally to come down into that you know to yeah to have a possibility to feel that and also the speed up of the undoing of all the ideas that you held about yourself that are not true so it just continues and it helps you to uh, to let go of these ideas, to let your self-image be completely re renewed, in fact. And um, so that you need to repeat these sentences. It says here, it's like, your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. You have nothing to say about it, in other words. You have nothing to say about it. So any description that you hold about yourself, let go of it. It's not going to be it. It's not going to be helpful. And um, so practicing that, applying that, you see certainly, yeah, slowly but certainly, you see a shift occur in your life where, where this disappears, literally, these, these uh, ideas about yourself or these, um, it's more like it calms in a certain sense, it calms down uh, and becomes real to you that you are as God created you. You know, it's like it lands in you. That's why I say it really puts you, it puts you down right into that idea. That's the opportunity and the practice that we do. So I, I love this lesson. I love it for that. It's like, um, then look at the opportunity here. You know, look at the opportunity that you get to to realize this. There's a way given to you to actually come to this realization. Not bad. That's so great. It's so beautiful. So, so these these things that we do on the whiteboard is just a bit of playing with these ideas. But also, like in any way that we can receive this, it is welcome. Who knows how this is going to come to you? So, hey, this this is great. So I, I thank you for your participation in this. Um, so I'm going to share the PDF one more time. In the longer exercise period, which we're going to do, um, which would be most profitable if done for the first five minutes of every waking hour, we will begin by stating the truth about our creation. Light and peace and joy abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. 
then put away your foolish self images and spend the rest of the practice period in trying to experience what God has given you in place of what you have decreed for yourself. You are what God created you or what you made. One self is true, the other is not there. Try to experience the unity of your one self. Try to appreciate its holiness and the love from which it was created. Try not to interfere with the self which God created as, as you by hiding its majesty behind the tiny idols of evil and sinfulness you have made to replace it. Let it come into its own. Here you are. This is you. And light and joy and peace abide in you because this is so. So this is great. So you are what God created you or what you made. You can choose. Like one is real and the other isn't. It's not there at all. So try to experience the unity of your one self. Try to appreciate its holiness and the love from which it was created. So this is really like uh, a human being treatment, so to speak, um, to to have this, yeah, be healed in you, to to let your human, um, say your humanhood, disappear or dissolve or heal, whatever you want to call it. So it's. It is very carefully formulated too. Try to appreciate, like we don't want to force this upon you, but actually it, it will be your total joy, you know? So <laughs> that's great. So we do this very carefully. So don't, don't push yourself, but you might want to try to do this just to have a different experience of yourself because you are not happy with you as a human being you're not happy with yourself in your descriptions of yourself they limit you they they make you feel like you're nothing or sinful or whatever it is that you feel about yourself so now today just try to appreciate a little tiny bit of your holiness and of your the joy that lives in you maybe you want to taste some of that here's a bit of that so it's like this is how carefully uh, formulated this is like you have no idea uh, what you are th trying to do and how successful you will be by just trying it a little bit you know? so i i love to read it this way it's like it's so lovingly done it's so it brought to you from out of time into your human ideas about yourself in such a way that you, it is made easy for you to accept it. Step by step, little by little, as much as you want. Don't push it. <laughs> so that's great. So let's let's actually do this then. Um, so here's my PDF again. So let me see that we don't miss anything. Try not to interfere with the self which God created as you by hiding its majesty behind the tiny idols of evil and sinfulness you have made to replace it. Let it come into its own. Here you are. This is you. And light and joy and peace abide in you because of this, because this is so. You may not be willing or even able to use the first five minutes of your, of each hour for this exercise. Try, however, to do so when you can. At least remember, like if all this is not working out for you in the practicality of the day, at least do this then. At least remember to repeat these thoughts each hour. Light and peace and joy abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Then try to devote at least a minute or so 
to closing your eyes and realizing that this is a statement of the truth about you. If a situation arises which seems to be disturbing, disturbing quickly dispel the illusion of fear by repeating these thoughts again. Should you be tempted to become angry with anyone, with someone, tell him silently, light and peace and joy abide in you. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. You can do so much for the salvation of the world today. You can do so much today to bring you closer to the part in salvation which God has assigned to you. And you can do much today to bring the conviction to your mind that the idea for the day is true indeed. Light and peace and joy abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. So let's do this for just a couple of minutes. Light and peace and joy abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Put away your foolish self-images. Spend the rest of the practice period that we're now going to do in trying to experience what God has given you in place of what you have decreed for yourself. So let's do this. So don't forget to breathe and make your exhale longer than you're breathing in, like a lot longer. It will help you to release. Love and peace and joy abide in me. God guarantees my sinlessness.
right. Thank you for that. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. So to entertain some real ideas about yourself, how about that? That is so great. Like just a touch is enough, you know, to to feel, to feel your connection and to feel like a little bit of that joy. Like, yes, it is there. Yes, it is true. This is, this is who I am. This is who I am. I don't have to make myself up. I don't have to make myself into something I'm not it's so great. So I want to <clears throat> go dive a little bit in chapter four or five, I mean, sorry. Here we go. The guide to salvation. The way to learn to know, to learn to know your brother is by perceiving the Holy Spirit in him. We have already said that the Holy Spirit is the bridge or thought transfer of perception to knowledge. So we can use the terms as if they were related because in his mind they are. This relationship must be in his mind because unless it were, the separation between the two th ways of thinking would not be open for healing. He is part of the Holy Trinity because his mind is partially yours and also partially God's. This needs clarification, not in statement, since we have said this before, but in experience. So it's like you cannot clarify this by words. You actually need to experience it, just like we do in the lesson today. Like we had our we had our ideas, we put them down. It's like, okay, this is what I think about myself. Just a moment ago, I was thinking this about myself. And now here is the truth about me. So there there's a gap between the two. Apparently, it looks like that, but actually, no, there is not. There's a bridge between the two. And this is the, the bridge that we apply, which is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the bridge of thought transfer from perception, from that which we see with the senses and with, with our, um, say, objects that we're perceiving into the, uh, to knowledge where you actually come into a whole different sphere where nothing needs to be explained where you know you know this this is where you come into in being in light and love in recognition of your true self knowing is is an attribute of that is a whole part of it nothing needs to be explained in that sense in that when when you experience that so here um we see that what we just did in our lesson uh, is in fact uh, an example of what is being shared here. Like we cannot clarify it with ideas, but we can experience it. That's where it happens. The Holy Spirit is the idea of healing. Being thought, the idea gains as it is shared. So, so what is the power of sharing? What is the power of sharing? It's like literally like, exemplifying it bringing it into expression by you you know remembering this by you sharing it by you repeating it for yourself by doing these exercises by uh, all this like you you're familiar uh, with the idea of, so you're familiar with the idea of when you share an idea it becomes more powerful you know you know this Somebody says a word, for instance, COVID and scary. So these two went really well, like it sold really well in the world. These ideas were shared and look what happened. Suddenly there's a whole world that is threatened by one word, by two words, maybe COVID and fear. Like, so you know the principle of sharing ideas and having that become stronger. So that is not different with true ideas. So that's the great thing with what we do. It's like coming together, 
remembering these things, uh, repeating those things for ourselves, um, feeling, having, having, you know, exemplifying it or demonstrating it, feeling it, experiencing it, that makes it stronger. With, yeah, the more you share it, the stronger it becomes in you. How wonderful, how wonderful this works. So this is with true ideas as well as with illusions. That is all, that is in that sense the same. So the only difference then is when you share a true idea, when you actually exemplify a true idea, you become happy because it it, it is like uh, the recognition of the completedness of you, of the wholeness of you. You know, that you have a total recognition with, like every cell of your body has a total recognition with your wholeness, with your with the love that created you. So one more, a couple more lines I love to share. Being the call for God, it is also the idea of God. If you are part of God, it is also the idea of yourself as well as of all parts of God. The idea of the Holy Spirit shares the property of other ideas because it follows the law of the universe of which it is a part. Therefore, it is strengthened by being given away. It increases in you as you give it to your brothers. Well, there you have it. So this is so great. Like, this is the motivation. It is the motivation for you to start giving this away. In whatever way. How do you do that? Recognizing, like it says here in E1, recognizing, perceiving the Holy Spirit in him. And you say like, well, how can I do that? How can I perceive the Holy Spirit in him? How do you do that? Well, for sure, you have to take some time to let that occur in you. So when you are in relationship, when you are in relationship, take enough time to actually start to see that, to stay with it not trying to do anything in a certain sense it's like you stay with it until that occurs that it is a real occurrence in you slowly but certainly your your ideas change you come to a real place if this is your focus to start to see the spirit if that is your focus you will end up there suddenly there there doesn't seem to be any obstacle anymore to perceive that and what happens you actually start to see spirit in him how do you know that yes indeed but because you feel the love for him you feel the love for him what is binding us together the love that we are so you feel that and it's like oh my god i really thought you had something against me or i really thought that this was happening i really thought that i was sick i really thought that you were sick. I, you know, like this continuously. So take take enough time to let that occur in whatever situation seems to confront you in terms of um, conflict, disease, disaster, emergency, whatever it is. Like stay with it. Don't run away from it. Stay with it. Take your time to connect with it, to connect with the Holy Spirit in your brother because it is where all the fun is it is where where we actually communicate where you feel the love for each other what else you want to do you know so this is so great all right so thank you so much for uh, being patient with me sitting with me coming to the place where actually uh, say we feel the love for each other so thank you for taking time to do so today.